I'm Kevin Davis, and this is the Catholic Family Podcast, and I'm very honored today to be joined by Mr. Noah Ellis. He is a seminarian right now studying in, or I guess not technically right now, he's 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 on summer vacation, if I can call it that, um, and, and he is, but normally with Bishop Pivarunas in Omaha, Iowa, you know, kind of the same thing right across the border from each other. And he's joining us today to talk about what I think is going to be a very interesting topic and one that that actually I've had on my mind for a long time. And I've seen recently actually come up on social media as well. And that is the spiritual danger of anime. Now, everyone out there who has a phone, internet connection or whatever, I'm sure has seen anime cartoons, um, either just, you know, pictures or, you know, the cartoons themselves. And well, Mr. Ellis is here to explain to us why they are dangerous and, and I assume why we and our children should avoid them. So Mr. Ellis, thank you very much for coming on and, and giving us your valuable time. And uh, I don't know wherever you want to begin. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, so right, we want to look at this uh, anime. It's, it's an interesting topic. Like why is a seminarian coming on and talking about Japanese uh, animation? And uh, you know, it's, it seems like a niche topic, something that you know, only certain people get into, whatever. Um, I think we have to look at it uh, in the context of the spiritual battle for the souls of our children. So, or, you know, uh, those who do have children, of course. Um, uh, many things can be discussed when, when we talk about this, and it, it frequently is discussed here on this channel, Father Zepeda with the Catholic Wire on Stephen Heiner's True Restoration, and even outside of Catholic sources uh, like the Daily Wire, and even politicians like Ron DeSantis and Glenn Youngkin are talking more and more about a lot of the dangers that our modern society is, uh, is, is uh, advancing towards children. Like the overuse of technology um, and the brain rot that, that comes from that, uh, social media, and then outside of the internet, aberrations in society, the evils we encounter in schools and the universities, etc. And so I believe, and I really... Um, so I grew up in this age, right? I grew up, um, you know, in sixth grade, I had a cell phone, uh, full access to the internet. I did not grow up traditional Catholic, so I had exposure to all these things. And, um, and I feel like uh, anime is something that it's, it's one of these fronts um, on the attack against the souls of our children, one of Satan's fronts. Maybe it's not the most important or the widest spread, but even among traditional Catholics, like Kevin just mentioned, we do see it um, making some inroads um, here, kids watching. Watching it, uh, you see on yeah. Twitter icons and pictures all the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, I, I was just going to say that I, I, it, I'm, I'm glad you brought this topic up because I, in high school, and so this was, boy, now almost 20 years ago, and and <laughs> I, I had you know, you know, other fellow classmates who, I remember they were drawing anime characters, and yeah. and I remember I remember seeing it. And I thought, oh, okay, that's fine. If it's cartoon, and it, it, it didn't really cross my mind until. Um, I don't know, months later or whatever, they unfortunately got in trouble for drawing lewd pictures, mm -hmm. you know, inappropriate right. pictures of anime. Now, ever since then, it's really, it's really kind of struck, stuck in my head that it's like, okay, is that, is that connected? You know, is it, is that something that comes from that? And I don't know if that's the only issue with it, but, but it is something, again, as, as you kind of mentioned, when you emailed me, it's like, hey, we should talk about this. It's like, oh, that's, this is great. Because as you mm -hmm. said, I mean, something like, like we, we talked about with, um, we've talked about yoga, we've talked about other little issues that people, they think, oh, maybe that could be an issue. But when you actually dig into it, it could be a big issue. So, so I'm really interested to, to, to hear what you have. Absolutely. So, you know, absolutely. That's a, that's a, that's a problem. The oversight situation. I think that's the biggest problem. And we'll get to that. Um, but what we have to understand in just like yoga, right? Yoga, uh, you know, there, there's, there's an intrinsic problem to it with anime. I would say with media in general, it's indifferent morally, you know, we can look at it and say it's indifferent to watch a Disney movie, but I mean, there could be bad things in the Disney movie, et cetera, et cetera. But in general, watching something is indifferent with anime. There are some intrinsic problems that should make us skeptical. We'll get into that. Certainly, uh, you know, we should be concerned about what we're putting into our souls. We're very concerned often what we're putting into our bodies with vaccines and antibiotics and stuff like that. But, um, but what we're putting into our souls is, is much more important and, you know, it can be much more dangerous. And Pius XII mentioned this in, um, in one of his last encyclicals, Miranda Porsus, which was published, I think, in 1955 on the, danger, uh, on the emerging mass media, emerging television. Um, he, he pointed out that media has the, through its audio and visual ap appeal, can enlighten us 
uh, and lead us to God in ways that um, in, in unique ways, like we're trying to do with the podcast, like uh, Father Zapata, like so many of us have tried to do uh, using media in a good way, but it can pervert and um, uh, pervert souls in a, in a way uh, that is uh, very efficient in a way that we've never uh, seen before. So uh, we certainly, uh, we ask questions about Disney. Like I said, that's one of, it was one of your first things, Kevin. I've been watching it for a long time. So <laughs> one of your first things was, was Disney. And that's, right. you know, that's obviously a wider, uh, there's a wider audience there uh, that, that, that are familiar with that in the West. But, um, but again, this is something that is worth talking about, um, especially since it is, it is growing in popularity in general. Anime uh, is now a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, I, I don't like statistics that much, but I have a few. So um, it's accessible, of course, with any streaming service. And, and then it's pirated all over the place online. It's very, very easy to access. Um, there's at least a 118% increase in demand in it worldwide since 2020. So it's, again, it's growing rapidly in popularity. And, uh, and, and in that it's, uh, not just among, of course, this is everybody, not just Catholics, but it's going to become, um, a lot more visible for that reason. Um, and then there was a couple of movies that came out recently that were even released, I think limited in the theaters, but made quite a lot of money outside of the, the mainstream that Disney had. Um, licensed and dubbed in the 80s and 90s some anime movies uh, that were more kid friendly, I guess you could say. But recently, there have been some releasing in their own right, even in America, and, uh, and have been enjoying quite a bit of popularity. It's becoming something that's a lot more uh, normalized. So, um, well, that's yeah. interesting that you that you say. I, I like how you say that it's it's these were made for children, right? Back in the day, some cartoons were made for children. Mm -hmm. And I think anime, it's, it's another one of these things that we get into this trap with Disney too, you know, that, oh, it's, it's a cartoon, you know, it, it's animated, thus it must be fine. You know, it's, right. of course my, my kids can watch it. it. It's animated. It's like, well, no, <laughs> I mean, we're, why yeah. would you think that? And, 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 and you know, again, you've, you've listened to my podcast. I think the same with Disney that it's like, you know, these things, I, I don't, I don't condemn anything. I don't, what, who am I? But, but mm -hmm. I think that the point is, and I'm sure your point today is mm -hmm. you gotta be as a parent, especially you have to be so careful what your kids are putting into their heads. And mm -hmm. what is it? Yeah. What is anime? I, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a, it's a great point. What is it? Why do they, what is it? it? Uh, right? It's not a cartoon. I, I would say that just um, because anime fans would flip out if you called it a cartoon, generally <laughs> speaking. Enough. See how and, little I know about um, anime. Yeah. So no, I mean, um, and when you call it a cartoon, what you think of when you think of cartoons, you, you think SpongeBob, you think of like um, Tom and Jerry and, and Looney Tunes and, and what Phineas and Ferb and whatever has come out in the last uh, 20 years. Generally, they're more episodic. They are aimed at children, more focused on comedy. There's no central narrative. Um, there are some exceptions when we're talking about TV, of course. And then um, when we talk about movies, of course, they're animated. Um, they're aimed at feature films, which do, of course, have cohesive narratives, but, uh, but they are aimed at younger children. Anime is not aimed at younger children. It is aimed at teenagers and older. Um, and some anime are aimed at uh, specifically at adult audiences. And we have some of that, like late night cartoons like um, South Park and things like that in America. But anime, uh, this is what it is. This is everything it's in here and really the exception is those things that are aimed at children that should be considered the exception so we have to understand from the outset that anime is something a lot more adult in content than what we would consider with cartoons and that's one of the problems with calling it a cartoon is is potentially we are um we are whitewashing it a little bit we're we're watering down really the dangers that are here this is why we're here so um but yeah what what is anime it's the japanese animation that's all that means, and it's um, a medium which uses 2D animation um, uh, to tell stories. And, and it's just like film in that uh, anime is not a genre. Anime has genres. So anime, there are romance, and there are drama, and there's action and adventure, and there's horror, and it's, it's psychological, and, and so on and so on. It's, a, it's recognizable from the art style with the spiky hair and the colors and the swords and the guttural noises that they all make, which are really weird. Um, but um, but anime, it's this. It is a wider medium of expression. I would I would put it more that way, um, mm -hmm. and it has a, a little bit of history in America. I mean, we had in the '60s there was things like Astro Boy, which were released, but um, but really anime picked up in the '80s and '90s with uh, 
um, uh, there were some movies released in the theater, like I mentioned, dubbed uh, and licensed some some movies. That's like the cult, the Disney of Japan. Um, and so they licensed the Ghibli films that were released in America. I remember seeing some trailers for them. Uh, they were just like any other cartoon. I mean, you didn't really notice that that's they were anime, but that's what they were. And um, and, and then in the 90s, you had actually um, something released on TV like Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, uh, Pokemon, of course, and Digimon. And so those things uh, – and again, those are – some of them have more adult content in them, but generally aimed at children. And that gives, of course, the, the impression that anime is for kids, but it is, it is not. And this is what uh, people found out as, as the internet, um, as, as streaming, as cell phones became available, um, more and more anime became available. And, and so – and we were able to see uh, the, the bigger picture of it all and something that I, I certainly – I had exposure to when I was in middle school. So um, and that before, I, before I converted and so uh, hopefully we're going to be able to, um, to talk a little bit more about the dangers at play here. And is that something that in, in, Jap in Japan, is that more mm -hmm. clear that it's not meant for younger kids? It's more mm -hmm. obvious there that they, they know, like everybody knows it's mm -hmm. made more for teenagers. While in America, again, because we've grown up on Disney and whatnot, it's kind of this, again, this misconception. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember when, it, I mean, when I was growing up, I, re I, I clearly remember Pokemon and whatnot, but I, my mom would def she would never let us have anything to do with it. And I'd have to ask her why. I mean, but maybe she, I mean, she obviously had some instinct or maybe research into, you know, that it, yeah, there was obviously something wrong with it. I, I'll, I'll ask my mom after this. I'll, maybe I'll post that in the comments. And mom, if you're listening to this, why did you not let us have anything to do with Pokemon? Yeah, I'll be interested to see what she says. Uh, maybe the evolution part of it could have something to do with it. But, okay. um, but I mean, that's that's the, you know they, the Pokemon evolve, and that was that was a big the Pokemania thing. I remember reading. I was not alive then. I'm quite young, but there was a whole <laughs> Pokemon Pokemania in the '90s and early 2000s, and um, I, I was alive, but I was too young to care or to know. But anyway, so uh, just a couple of disclaimers as we go into it. If I mention an anime, it's not an endorsement. I, I know I know quite a few of them, and I'll give examples. But it's I'm not never endorsing. Uh, I just want to make that clear. And also, um, I make some generalities. But um, like when I talk about themes and narrative structure, um, not everything fits into the same box. It's you know it's a diverse medium. Now everything has every problem. Um, it just if you know if somebody w watches anime and watches this and gets angry like I watch this and it doesn't have that in it, I yeah okay I'm making generalities. I'm saying you most likely will find these things in there, and just understand it from that perspective, right? And then I'm not coming at this puritanically, not like um, you can't watch anything. Um, I'm again a position of understanding. I was exposed to it at one time, and um, and just. This is this is what you this is what you'll find. I want to give a Catholic perspective. There's not a lot of literature on this topic. If you looked it up, it's hard to find where to start. Like, and then you know some things will be superficial. Uh, some sources, I mean, superficial. Not cover everything. I want to try to cover everything um, that I can to be as thorough as possible in discussing in discussing this topic. So. Well, and I would ask everyone too before you get mm -hmm. started that everyone throw aside your emotions and your preconceived ideas and, and yeah. remember. Please. Just because you like something, just because you're, you know, you're going to be upset over this, stop, you know, really consider, st stop for a second. Just because you like it doesn't mean it's good. It doesn't mean you were being, you were not attacking you. It, right now, mm -hmm. we want the best for you and for your children. It's, of course, what, what Mr. Ellis is here for. So just keep that in mind. Don't feel attacked. Don't feel like, hey, we're, we're trying to shut down all of your fun. Just remember, this is trying mm -hmm. to, to help save souls. That, that's, that's truly what we're trying to do. So, so okay, let, let, let's get going. Let, let's hear what, what's, yep. what's wrong with anime mm -hmm. yeah let's talk about the foundation first the cultural foundation of it all because i think that that gives us insight to why the other problems exist you know why does violence exist why does a sexualization exist um matt walsh recently got in trouble because he may saying that it is demonic uh, people got very angry at him he got news articles written about him um and he because he said i don't have any evidence it's just a vibe um, he was joking, of course. He's usually joking. He's very sarcastic, but he wouldn't have said it if it hadn't pushed him in that, if it hadn't rubbed him in that way. And so, you know, I, I'm not going to say anime is demonic, but, um, but, but I mean, why did he, why was he inclined to say that? So, mm -hmm. well, it's, it, anime is not Christian. We'll just put it out in the front. Uh, anime is not Christian. It's not based on, it's not Catholic. It's not based on Catholic morality, Catholic dogma. It's from a society that's totally alien uh, to, Catholicism. It, it Japan rejected Christianity. It rejected
rejected the missionaries violently and uh, martyrs uh, in the 15 in the 1500s and 1600s um, and, and the, uh, the Japanese small amount of Japanese Catholics were forced to live underground without the sacraments for hundreds of years because Japan closed itself off until the United States opened it up again. That's not that everybody rejected Catholicism. Of course, it was the it was the it was the ruling class that did that. Um, they they didn't want their rule to be jeopardized by uh, by the new religion. But nevertheless, it stands the case that Japan does not have Catholic morality. It does not have an understanding of Catholic dogma or Catholic teachings or Christian teachings in any way. It's a pagan country. Most people in Japan recognize, call themselves um, Mushukuyo, which means, sorry uh, about my pronunciation, of course, um, without religion. So um, these people, not atheists, not, it's not to be understood in that way, but, uh, but more that they have a normal religiosity. They're not uh, connected to any organized religion. Um, the biggest religion of Japan is, of course, Shinto. Um, it's a homegrown, it, 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 the original religion of Japan. It's shamanistic in origin, just like the Native American religions. It's very kind of, it's similar to that kind of nature worship with some ancestor worship. And, uh, and they all kind of will hold some of that or believe some of that. They'll go to shrines, they'll pray, they'll do the different traditions, but they're not concerned with uh, actual as association in that religion. And Buddhism is the second largest. It was the religion of Japan for a long time. And the two have, have merged over time. Uh, this, hmm. and, they've, and, and is these religious form Japanese culture. And when we talk about literature, when we talk about you know, Western literature, and we want to understand, like uh, Tolkien said, that The Lord of the Rings is a fundamentally religious and Catholic work. And that shouldn't shock people. I mean, because Tolkien was a Catholic, and uh, he has the he has the um, heritage of, of a Catholic society or England, uh, but England, uh, Europe, a Catholic society, and, uh, and and England was Catholic at one time, of course. And so, um, you know, maybe this was shocking to people living in the materialistic twentieth century, but it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be. Uh, all good literature is in, it, it can it exists in the culture which produced it. Um, Beowulf is Catholic. I mean, it may not have priests in it or whatever. It may not be preaching about God, but Beowulf was Catholic. It was made by Catholic monks or Chaucer or Dante or on, on Shakespeare and Jane Austen, even, even after the Protestant Reformation. These, these stories are fundamentally, you'll find at the base of them, Christianity, Christian morality. And, and then when you get to the 20th century, um, after the Protestant revolt, but, but especially once we get past the Enlightenment, we've knocked out that foundation and the literature changes drastically um, from any analysis. You can, they have a different foundation. And so again, if we're gonna understand Eastern literature, understand animates and start understand maybe the religions that, that inform them. Um, try not to go on this too long. This is what interests me a lot because that's, that's. Uh, oh, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, but it makes sense. You know. yeah. mm -hmm. Right, so um, Shinto. Uh, Shinto, again, I mentioned shamanistic uh, religion. So they, um, it's a religion without dogma, without sacred books. Um, you know, they have a, they have a priesthood and a, a, a general structure, but, um, but it's, it's ambiguous. It's an ambiguous religion. It's a mixed, I would say it, it's hard to exactly pinpoint it because they don't have dogma. Um, it, it's the Catholic encyclopedia says it's pantheistic. I think it's somewhere in between pantheistic and polytheistic depending on who you ask. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some, everything in Shintoism has a spirit. It's called Kami. And Kami is a, uh, a manifestation of a constantly evolving, impersonal, uh, creative force that, that, that it manifests itself in everything. And so literally everything in nature, everything man makes, even um, every human, of course, and then even ideas can have their own Kami, their own spirit. And so everything... Uh, we, we, there's a focus on living in harmony with the world around you. Um, and, uh, uh, but the problem when, when that's, those are very pantheistic ideas. And then you have, uh, they do have specific gods that are better than the others that are more, uh, Kami that are more powerful. They're most powerful is the sun goddess, uh, who they claim their emperor is descended from. Their emperor was actually worshiped for a long time. That's why like in world war, uh, world war two, I mean, they have their their general cultural assumptions, but also their their emperor's divine, and so they're going to 
die for him. Uh, you know, they'll whatever. And again, we see that especially in you know, World War II movies and things like that, where the Japanese are willing to go to just straits that we would never go to for uh, for their emperor for their country. Um, and so uh, they have some gods that are more powerful than the others, but generally pantheistic. Um, there's no absolutes. Um, there's no absolute good or evil. Uh, matter and spirit is confused. Uh, there's no matter without spirit, spirit without matter. Um, think of like the yin and the yang. It's it, all the Eastern countries as China and Korea and Japan all had mutual influence on each other. And so you can think kind of of the yin and the yang here. Um, there's no, there's the darkness and the light and the light and the darkness. Um, everything is in flux. Time in space is all intertwined and, um, and the, there's no, uh, of course, original sin. Uh, there's no re redemption required for man, really. There's no reward or punishment after death. You just kind of become a commie somewhere, and you overwatch your family. You watch over your family. Um, there's, so there's ultimately here, um, maybe they'll, they'll say that they believe in the supernatural, but whenever you intertwine the supernatural and the natural like that, you're, you're, you've destroyed the supernatural. So there's an ultimate denial of the supernatural. I mean, if, if the natural and the supernatural are the same, then there's super, there's nothing supernatural. Right. Um, everything is natural. That's, and that's, you know, when you talk about Protestantism and things like that, that man has, uh, they said man has a, a need for the supernatural, um, a, a need for grace that makes grace not supernatural anymore, um, just as, as a side point. But um, that's not called non-contradiction. And then uh, the, the uh, there, of course, they, it, it denies, like I said, denies non-contradiction. It denies the principles of reason, basic principles of reason. Um, uh, Shintoism does. So it's a, but um, what it does result in is a uh, focus on um, the collective. Uh, you know, all Eastern societies are more collectivist in, in orientation. That's why like wokeism and things like that aren't a thing in, in, in Eastern countries. They're collectivist. So um, it, it, it's, it's not in the... Uh, it's not in the best interest of society uh, for these these ideas, which are more or less they begin individualistic. It's I think I am this. I think I am a woman. I think this or that. Um, there's none of that really. I mean, maybe on an individual basis, but but the focus is on the cohesion in society, hierarchical structure, maintaining tradition, um, a family loyalty, genuineness. You think of um, the samurai and the bushido uh, uh, code and things like that. The um, precision and uh, you think of Japanese cars they're very precisely made all the parts are, are made very precisely they they um, uh, the, the Japanese are known for they, they yeah the Toyota is the is the is the best make but um, uh, you have cleanliness and um, uh, you think of Japan as a relatively clean place it's a safe place low crime rates great societal harmony that's the focus is on the harmony between nature and man with each other a man with other men. It sounds New Age-ish, and uh, there's certainly some uh, there's certainly some uh, correlation there. And New Ageism just goes back to really ancient pantheism or really ancient paganism, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, and then, of course, Buddhism comes in, and there's a great focus on individual enlightenment. Um, Confucianism, not a religion; it's a political philosophy, and it's uh, again a focus on maintaining those societal structures. So that that is kind of Japan. Uh, but but again, we see problems propping up here the, 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 no absolutes uh, there's no absolute morality uh, there's so um morality is is relative to society and so you know homosexuality is illegal more or less in japan now but in the future if society keeps moving in that way there's nothing to stop them from legalizing it um it, things such as things such as that um so again um the main problem again is that we, we, we don't have a Christian morality. We don't have absolutes. Uh, we, don't have, uh, we don't have that influence of, of, of the Christian uh, dogma. And if anime waxes, if any Eastern literature waxes philosophical, uh, you're going to tend, again, towards um, more decadent forms of Western philosophy. That's what they were attracted to when they did open up with the West. Um, they had the German philosophers come in, uh, like Hegel, and or, or descended from that. So ideas descended from that. So German idealism and existentialism, which I would leave Father McKenna to talk about, maybe in his series uh, about things like that. I mean, I, I could, but but uh, the point is that you won't find Aristotle or Saint Thomas anywhere. Um, right. You're going to find more decades because those things. It was it was politically kind of, uh, but also that's what best jived with their preconceived notions. Um, was the more decadent forms of Western philosophy going 
kind of off here, but um, but but this is this is the cultural background. Just trying to just trying to explain. This is if you have uh, you know good themes in anime, um, what people are going to say is that it taught me about family or friendship or loyalty, or it taught me about uh, perseverance or things like that. That all fits into our narrative. Our narrative here, the, this this cultural foundation, and um, in. And so, not that every anime is going to be Shintoist, and some will include Shintoism, but not all of them are going, it's not going to be an apologia for that. You're not like, if you watch an anime, you're not necessarily cooperating in their religion or anything like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this is, uh, this is if we're going to understand uh, these, these, the problems we're about to get into, this is, this is a good uh, foundation. Um, and then there are things, like I said, a family, friendship, that's all good. And that's, they keep some aspects of the natural law, thanks be to God. By the grace of God, they did. Just like the Greeks had things to offer, um, uh, they they had some aspects of the natural law that they that they kept or figured out, um, which helped with the spread of, of Christianity. The Japanese have certain things that they certainly have kept from the natural law, and that's that's a good and laudable thing. That doesn't justify, uh, ever, you know, getting into getting into anime necessarily. But just as a side, you know, there are, there are some there could be some good things. That's naturally good things. I'm not denying that. Um, and getting into more of the specific problems, um, I mean, this is going to be more of a sensitive nature. Not, I mean, just I'd say more like you know, in Troy Ebo, uh, his interviews, you're not going to get super specific, but it it is going to be a little more on the um, on, on the on the sensitive side. We'll talk about over sexualization and things like that. So, in some uh, violence. Um, and there are some really, really gross, gratuitous violence in anime. And we'll mention some of that um, uh, just, just as a, just as a disclaimer there. Um, so there was actually, I wrote in my last minute preparation this morning. I saw where a um, a, a famous anime director, um, not that I've seen, I've seen nothing that that he made, but um, but he's supposedly famous. His name I think is Mamoru Oshii or something. And so he was saying that um, anime is being destroyed by eroticism and violence, hmm. and that it's being dominated by eroticism and violence. Um, interesting uh, hearing that. I don't think that his, you know, his his thing really paragons of virtue, mm -hmm. but um, but you know, I, I think that uh, even even you know even he's admitting that this is this has become a problem. It, it's it, it's really honestly, it's what makes money. Um, they say sex sells, and 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 you know what what draws young boys into anime. I think the, the visuals they're exciting, the fight scenes, the the swords, and the and, the, and they're fast paced, and it's uh, you know it's there's fighting in every episode, and there it's always you're always on your toes. Not every anime, of course, it has to do with fighting, but uh, but those. But many, you know, many of them do. Um, a lot of the ones that are specifically aimed at young uh, at boys do. So um, that's you, know, you can certainly see the point there. But first, with over sexualization, I want to set aside. There is anime pornography, and um, you know we're setting that aside. We're not talking about that. Um, that um, it, according to some anti pornography groups, it is it is one of the it is a serious issue. It's one of the most viewed types of pornography on the internet. Um, uh, we're going to talk more about uh, what we can expect from what would be considered mainstream, but just as, again, an aside with the anime pornography right before we leave that, um, the, 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 when we talk about the mainstream shows, they're, 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 again, there's over-sexualization there, and it's a very slippery slope down into worse things. Um, all you have to do is look up, because there's very perverted fans out there, um, you look up your favorite show or your favorite character, and there's going to be inappropriate fan art almost immediately. And that's going to—that's a very slippery slope down. That's what people say. That's what—that's um, what different um, sources have said that I've—I've I've read, and, and it, it makes sense. So um, you know, and then when once we get into um, this, it all, all we'll say is that um, that anything that somebody, anybody's perverse mind, anybody who has a perverse mind that uh, is depraved as they can possibly get, if they can draw it, it exists. Right. So, um, you know, we're, there's some there's some very 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 evil things that you could never depict with actual people um, in anime pornography, and and that I I really believe that that fuels a lot of like what we had with the Sound of Freedom recently and the the child uh, sex trade and things like that. I, I really I I really believe it's just my hypothesis, my my opinion. I don't think it's too far off though 
that that certainly this feeds some of that. Well, and I think um, it's something that that real real briefly, it's something that I I noticed. I, I did a I never actually did a show about it. But I did a little bit of research into Game of Thrones, and obviously, it's, mm -hmm. I know it's not anime, it's not a cartoon. It's a little off topic, but but I think it was kind of a, on that similar thread where it's like okay. I think that they, you could see society starting to to push a certain way, and it was kind of like this test. They, they test the waters. What can, what can be allowed? What's allowed? What can we get away with? You know, can we do this? Can we do this? And and I think Game of Thrones was a perfect example of anything, anything really. Yeah, anything I, I mean, goes. really, you can do anything, mm -hmm. anything you want, and people are going to be okay with it as long as it's entertaining enough. And it's just it's just the truth. And I think, as you say, I mean, when you consider that, uh, how much more should we consider what what we view? I mean, because as yeah. we know, as again with with pornography or with Game of Thrones or whatever, people understand what what is selling. And as you say, it's 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 violence, it's sex, and if that's the case, they're going to produce that. And yeah, there you go. You know, and, and so if that's what anime is doing, then stay mm -hmm. away. Right. So, okay, that's all we'll we'll say about that. Uh, anime pornography. We'll set that aside. Um, talk more about the kind of some of the mainstream, the mainstream stuff that that you know. This is the this is the stuff you'll find on Netflix or uh, there's an anime streaming service called Crunchyroll or Funimation or whatever else. Uh, this is this is the kind of stuff you'll find on those as opposed to um, uh, to pornography sites. So, uh, first of all, we and coming into it understanding that it's not going to meet standards of Christian modesty. Nothing will meet standards of Christian modesty. That doesn't justify watching it. That, I mean, that doesn't justify it. Just because I see worse things at Walmart doesn't mean you can watch whatever the heck you want. Hmm. Right. But I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's still an occasion of sin and it has to be weighed maturely. And I, I really don't think that 15 and 16 year olds can weigh that danger maturely. That's going to be up, should be up to the parents. And it really, even once you get a little bit older, even um, into your twenties, I really still think your, your judgment is maturing and, uh, and, and it's going to be really difficult for you to make a really unbiased decision about what you're watching. So there certainly is going to be a modesty. Um, even the kids stuff, I think even a, a Pokemon, you know, um, there, there's, there's, there's some pretty serious immodesty in there. And uh, this is something to consider. Um, just you know it's it's certainly something to consider it's it's in all media right it's 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 in all movies it's 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 that still doesn't justify watching it again it's an if it's an occasion of sin we have to we have to have um it's somewhat subjective what is immodest and what's not uh, based upon we have the objective standards of christian modesty right but maybe i you know when i was in middle school i could watch things and i maybe i would even think that it's that things are relatively modest in those shows now i go back and i understand it differently just because that's what i, I mean what was i experiencing every day in in school right. maybe what i was watching was even was better than that but uh, that again uh, that that still that doesn't justify necessarily um getting watching these things and um you know and, and there's uh, there's other things that are that are ubiquitous and all media that comes out these days characters being states of undress and whatever um those are not things to overlook. Those are things that you, that we have to be very, very careful about. And it, and again, it's, sometimes it's better just not even to broach. Well, the topic. And, and don't, I mean, not even get into it. Right. Don't, and don't get over desensitized to it. That's something that I, I've seen. Mm -hmm. And I, I, if you've been on Twitter, you've seen as well that there are supposed Catholics who have immodest avatars. And it's just like, it's, yes. it blows my mind. It's like, you see this, right? I mean, like, I mean, you, you, you're saying these Catholic things and you have not just anime. It's not just an anime, but it's an actually like mm -hmm. immodest anime. Picture. You like, immodest. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, I mean, do you not see this? Or, and I think there is, there's a, you get this desensitized because of, because maybe you did watch something like Game of Thrones, hopefully not, mm -hmm. but let's just say you did. And then, so yeah, a little bit of immodesty in, in, in this is, it's not a big deal. And I think that's, well, it's, it's way too easy to do. And, it, and again, it goes all the way down to Disney where it's like, come on, there's no immodesty in these Disney movies. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> Just okay. They have all sorts of other issues that they're bringing up. You know, rebellion yeah. against parents. You know, and, and whatever. You know, other bad values. And it's just can't be too careful. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Disney movies from the '90s, though? <laughs> I mean, some of them. I, True. I'm, not, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, like there is some there is some True. serious immodesty in some of those. Good point. Um, yeah, you know, Little I'm, I'm Mermaid. Just, you know, Jeez, yeah, Little Mermaid, no, great uh, yeah. Hunchback of Notre Dame, which Catholics can't watch because that was on the index. Just as as an aside. Um, yeah, just as an aside, that was on the index, and so, or they shouldn't. I mean, maybe you could justify it somehow, but, uh, but anyway, um, there, there's there's a modesty even in those, right? Um, and so, this is something that we do have to be careful about. You know, we'll find that in anime. You know, anime are usually um, usually the characters are teenagers, 
usually they're set in school um, and the girls will be in mini skirts. That's, that's generally just how that goes. So, I mean, that, <laughs> that's just, just how that goes with anime. Um, and, and so the, 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 main, the main problem with anime then is uh, anime is generally it's aimed at boys. There are some shows aimed at girls. There will be male immodesty in those, but, um, but female immodesty is the main problem uh, with anime. And it, you see that in unrealistic bodily proportions. It's all over the place. You'll, any, if you see any anime picture, you, you'll understand what I mean. Um, the, the, these, uh, these unrealistic uh, proportions that are hypersexualized. And, um, and you know, there's no other intention for doing it other than hypersexualization and, right. uh, and, and, and that, and that it's certainly that attraction, which is, it's just something very evil. Uh, and then you see this, um, you know, also, uh, the sexualization of children. Um, and this is, I, I kind of hinted, I hinted at that when we talked about anime pornography, but even in the mainstream quote unquote mainstream things, you will find, um, children that are sexualized and, Maybe they'll say, "Oh, it's actually like an immortal goddess, and so she's actually a thousand years old, and so it's not a child. It's it, it appears to be a child, and and this is there's actually an entire subgenre of this in anime, mm. it, it, a named subgenre, and it is it, why is it permitted? It's permitted because they can get away with it because it's art. I mean, that's that's my understanding. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I mean that seems to be True. the case. Is you can justify it because it's art; it's not actual children. Maybe you can say you can justify it by saying that they're not actually children. But yeah, no. So that that is that is a serious problem, and that is something that um, that is considered really co fairly common. The, all these things that I'm talking about, if you I don't recommend it, but if you go to a site that lists anime tropes, these things will be on there. So I mean, again, these things are are not are, are not like. Uh, fringy things the, these things are fairly common and generally considered a problem um so you know with yeah and so um even anime fans will say like this is a problem right um and honest ones uh the unrealistic bodily proportions and 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 with the, with the children again this also gives um can give a boys unrealistic expectations of women and it objectifies women and that's a buzzword objectifying women you know i think oh you're a liberal it's a problem to objectify women that's what pornography does, and, and that's what anime very frequently. Sometimes they are strong. They are like, I say strong. They are well written female characters. I'll admit that. You know, there are, but very frequently the female characters exist only for this appeal, and um, you know, mm -hmm. more often than not, especially especially with shows aimed at younger teenage boys, the ones with action and adventure in them, um, a lot of those shows will have female characters in it, and this is why they're in it. So um, it's called fan service. There's a word for it. <laughs> it's called fan service. And so um, it's just that uh, to keep in mind. If if you're if you're you know, if your child is getting in, if your child's getting into anime, you're like oh you know it's it seems harmless. Uh, this stuff is in there. It is for sure. It, there's a very high propensity that's going to be in there. It's more likely to be in there than it is not. Mm -hmm. um, and then just some, some other other things. A very common trope is the harem. <laughs> it's extremely common uh, where you have a you have a main character. Who's in high school generally? Again, generally set in high school. Um, a character set in high school, and he's just got like six girls who are all vying for his attention, which is totally unreal. This is not reality. But the characters are general. Those male characters are often very um, two, -dim two dimensional, so that you're able to live vicariously through that. That's the mm -hmm. intention there. So um, and you, you, that that is like that's an entire kind of genre or a trope uh, of shows will, will, that come out like that. Um, and even even when even when it's just a love triangle or just a romance, if it's an anime set in high school, these are high schoolers. As Catholics, we understand, as you discussed with Father McKenna last month or the month before. I mean, um, dating is is an occasion of sin for Catholics, and so um, Catholics should not be watching shows where the where, where there is where there is teenage dating. So, um, in general, you know, any kind of anime that is that is an anime uh, with a high school romance should be off limits to Catholics. I mean, Catholics shouldn't really be watching that. That's that's going to be an occasion of sin, and and potentially you know give un unrealistic expectations uh, when it comes to human relationships, and, uh, and so it's something to it's something to really stay away from. Well, well, and, and as you say, I mean, I mean, what when, when children or teenagers, you know, as well, are watching things. They they soak up everything they watch. I, I guess it's a little different when they're when they're younger. They're soaking in everything that everything they they see. They they're learning from when they're teenagers right. that they are they are, you know, kind of learning who they who they are and what they want to be and what they mm -hmm. want to like. And and then so if you 
if into this very shapeable mind and moldable mind you, you throw in this this garbage really is what it is or yeah. these bad ideas i mean these totally uncatholic ideas and it's of course we, we both would totally agree that, that that's hollywood as well i mean that, that's not even a yes. question that the 90 99.9 .9 of what comes out of hollywood can be said pretty much the same thing we're saying here that they, mm -hmm. they have these these tropes that are that are immoral and and interesting for for teenagers and that that's where they want to push you and so the, you know the question is why are they doing it and i say obviously first of all because it's interesting and it gets it sells you know it, it makes the money but i i think it's even i i think it's even deeper i think the devil's behind it i really do i'm not Absolutely. saying it, again as you said i'm not saying it's satanic but i i think the devil has his fingers in in really all media mm -hmm. No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's certainly the, the problem that we're looking at here. Um, the, the minds of children are very, like, very moldable, and uh, it's, it's very dangerous to have these, put these ideas in there. So um, other, other uh, you know, moving on some other things that protagonists can be perverts, uh, very frequently are perverts. And, um, and it's for f jokes. It's for fun. It's, you know, it's, it's not like it's something they're overcoming. It's not like uh, it's, this vice is funny, and it, it's played for laughs. That is why it's in there. Um, I was reading recently, because um, I liked Digimon when I was a kid, and I was reading about uh, some of the, the latest stuff that has come out, like they finally kind of ended the narrative for the first Digimon series with the main characters. It has the main character, um, he has, uh, he's grown up, he's like in college now, but he has some bad magazines that, uh, that his Digimon sees, and he has to like explain it away. It's for laughs. It's not for, you know, it's not about character growth. He's not trying to overcome this vice. It's in there. Why? It's a, it's, a, it's a vice. And is it mentioned again in the film? I don't think so. No, but you're supposed to like and relate with the main character who just, they're not, that, they're just not great people. And they, okay, they're flawed or whatever. But, uh, but, you know, we're supposed to, we should want to overcome those flaws. And so again, you see the Japanese, this is, this is a more flippant thing to them. This isn't, you know, in our, our Christianity, we see this in the sins against the 69th commandment. It's black and white. It's a mortal sin if you consent to it. But uh, for the Japanese, it's a lot more, it's a lot more flippant. Uh, and, you know, the 69th, there's, it's, it's a natural thing. It's a natural attraction. And the J Japanese are obsessed kind of with, or in, in general, their, their, their culture, I don't know about every single one of them, but if, it, you know, it's, if it's natural, it's, it's a kind of good, you know, um, and so that's that's again a problem. The problem that we'll run into is a char characters, main characters who are who are um, who are actually actually perverts or or antagonists too, of course. Which it fits a little better for an antagonist, but um, but even even your main character, your protagonist, who you're rooting for, can sometimes just be a pervert. Um, you know, you have the frequent jokes and innuendo. Sometimes there'll be a specific over-sexualized female character who jokes are aimed at, like in every episode. Um, mm -hmm. That just dedicated joke dumpster, and that's and so uh, again to them that's funny. Um, they that doesn't justify it, but uh, to the Japanese that's funny. There, it, it's a you know it, they don't have the same black and white morality that we have as, as Catholics. So that's again we're talking. You know, can, we'll continue talking about it again. Uh, these are all just things to keep in mind, parents. Uh, if, if your child is getting into anime, maybe the anime doesn't have all these things in it. I, I mentioned this already. It doesn't have all these things in it. But, um, but if, if they really get into anime, if they decide that they want to watch more and more and more, they will eventually run into something that has these things in it. So um, the boundaries of modesty between the sexes are not respected. Um, or even, even just between uh, characters of the same sex. But just physical boundaries, not respected. Um, that goes with, again, with, uh, with the, um, with the modesty, but, um, but again, I mean, the unrealistic expectations can be given to teenagers from, from things like that. So, um, homosexuality you will find, uh, again, it's like J Japan's not concerned with wokeness or, or things like that. They're not really pushing it as an ideology, but, uh, sometimes they will push it, um, just as a joke. Um, and sometimes there will be shows that are, that are, <laughs> this this is a main theme, and it's just it's just you know it's just perverted. That's this how we're to understand it. And again, I just hit again. Pedophilia is is a is a very very real thing, a real concern here as well. So I mean that is and that is an official subgenre of of anime. So um, uh, just, yeah, that that's <laughs> extremely problematic. Um, again, this is not to assert that sexuality is at the center of every anime. Um, 
some shows of a more serious tone are not going to be like not going to feature a lot of this or any of it really. I mean, maybe just maybe just some modesty, but um, but uh, the, the, again, those shows that are specifically intended for young boys, they're called shonen shows. Shonen, which is more like the Naruto, like the fighting and the ninjas and the swords, and they're going to have this stuff in there again. It's it's uh, there's a specific word called fan service for it. So um, we mentioned all that. Well. Uh, do you have any, anything to say, Kevin? Anything to add to that? No, I mean, yeah. I mean it's it's kind of disturbing, to be honest. I mean, yeah. Especially the, the, you know, the, the pedophilia type stuff. Because, I mean, I think that's something that, again, it's it's weird. It's it's bizarre, as you see with, with the mm -hmm. um, uh, the movie you mentioned. Um, what's it called? The Jim Caviezel movie. Oh, Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom, yeah. So, I mean, mm -hmm. what was so bizarre about that, and I haven't seen it, and, and, and I've had a crowd that's kind of lambasted me for... for for promoting it, even though I haven't really promoted it. But mm -hmm. anyway, the I think that the strangest thing to me was you have a movie that came out that was clearly just saying, hey, we should stop child predators. That that was really the yeah. whole point. And the mass media came out like, like totally on fire against it. And it made me, it really had to, as like, okay, wait, what? I mean, like, how, how could it possibly be an mm -hmm. issue? And so it's a, it's another thing. I mean, is that, is that kind of normalized and I and, and we've just kind of missed that in society I mean I, I certainly hope not but it almost seems like it Great. it's certainly moving in that way I mean that's that, that would Unreal. seem to be the so um oh I mean they've they've torn they've torn up any and any boundary between the sexes and and you know any any kind of metaphysical reality and so that everything will move in that direction and again the Japanese like I said there there's no absolutes there's no really clear metaphysics there and and that, it, it tends to do the same thing it's just they do have that really strong emphasis on tradition and family which is good but uh, that seemed that would seem to be only really the only really redeeming redeeming thing here for me, uh, from my point of view. Um, the next thing we'll mention is extreme violence. That's like these are the two main things: is the the sex and the violence. Um, not every anime is going to have violence in it, right? I mean, only um, only ones that are action adventure are going to have that or horror. And so um, you kind of have to seek you kind of have to seek them out. The most popular shows are going to be. The uh, the ones aimed at young boys with the with sword fighting and things like that, um, the, and one reason I think why they appeal is that they do have more violence in them than most other things you would find in in media in general. And you think of Disney movies; there's really not a lot of fight scenes and things like that in there. Um, you think of, you know, no, they're usually not, um, or the cartoons on 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 TV, unless they're inspired by anime. There have been some that were inspired, like Avatar and things like that. Um, that only the things inspired by anime or anime are really going to have the saturation, the saturation of, 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 uh, of violence and, and things like that. China and Russia realize this. So I was reading this morning that, um, that Russia and China have banned some anime from uh, some very popular ones um, in their domains because of violence. And uh, people don't like that, but um, you know, it's like, well, Russia and China, they're communists or whatever. Um, they under, but they understand that, like in Russia, they've just banned transgenderism. So there are things that they do understand, and they understand what, what goes into um, having a healthy society. They want to have a healthy and lasting society there. Maybe they don't have Catholicism. <laughs> you know, I'm saying Putin's not the savior of the West, and I'm not saying Xi Jinping is not a communist. But uh, they do understand what it takes to have a cohesive, strong nation, and they want to get rid of anything that can corrode that. And, and th they have, in fact, banned some anime for violence, not for sexual things, but for violence. Um, even something as popular as Naruto, which I mean, I, I don't—I've never seen it. I don't—I don't think of it as having anything bad in it. I would have to research that, like in, in terms of sex. But in, in terms, of, they just wanted to ban it for violence. I think in Russia, they haven't done it yet, but they're—they're they're thinking about it. Um, so most, I'd say most anime. I mean, they're not going to be um, bloody dismemberment things like that. But some do. Some are very, very, very gruesome, and um, I, I want to mention. Uh, just a, just a couple that are that are really that are really popular, and these are the ones that were banned. I mean, uh, ban banned in Russia and China. Um, there's um, there's these actually feature cannibalism in them. So oh. talk about things normalizing things. Uh, two two of the most popular shows of the last decade were Attack on Titan and Tokyo Ghoul. That's what they were called. Attack on Titan is about uh, it's, it's post apocalyptic. Um, there's some twists. There's twists in the story, but but it, at least it starts off this way. Uh, post apocalyptic. What appears to be the rest, of the remnant of humanity, is living inside three walls. 
there's like a citadel in the middle and then three walls getting bigger as it goes out. Everybody's living in those walls. Outside the walls are these androgy generally androgynous, not always, human, colossal humanoid things. And the only thing that they care to do is eat humans. And so the whole series starts with they knock down the first wall, the Titans knock down the first wall, and the main character watches as his mom gets eaten. And it shows it in all its glory, and just the mother getting eaten by one of these creatures, one of these Titans. Later on, as the story goes on, um, you know, they have to fight them and whatever. And there's, there's some definitely anti-authority um, anti themes in the show as well. But um, they end up figuring out that there are some who can – Titans were humans at one time. They were like injected with serum. And so it actually is cannibalism. They actually are eating other humans. And there are some humans who can turn into Titans. But the way you get that power is by eating the person who has that power. And so the main character actually ends up eating his own father. Uh. Um, turning into a titan, eating his own father. So this is shocking. It should be shocking, right? It, but this is this is like probably the most popular show of the last decade in anime. The most popular one. There um, there have been movies uh, made for it, and and uh, it's you know it's on Netflix and everything. So um, very popular, very gruesome, very violent. Not for a Catholic. Tokyo Ghoul, very similar. Cannibalism. Um, Basically, you're in, in Tokyo. There's uh, you have human beings who are fighting these these ghouls. Ghouls can only eat human flesh and drink coffee and water. So they they get their sustenance from eating humans. And you can imagine how the story goes from there. The the main character gets turned into a half ghoul, and so yeah, that creates a problem in his life where now he has to eat human flesh to survive. Very gross, very gruesome, very um, – so yes, China and Russia banned those things, and they should, and we should ban those things in America, absolutely. Um, anything that has right. violence to, to that degree, blood and, and guts and gore and torture and just terrible things should be banned in America. There are some – and then you know, getting past this gruesome, uh, the gory, gruesome violence, there are some shows which are just way too dark. Um, one, again, one of the most popular shows from – this is actually – Two decades ago, the 2000s, was Death Note. Um, and it actually even received an American adaptation where they changed the names of the characters and, and like some of their traits and stuff to make it more westernized. So this was, again, extremely, extremely, extremely popular. If somebody gets into anime, they will watch these. This is, these are the things that people who get into anime watch. These are like the first ones that they watch. This is the first ones I watched. Um, uh, Death Note, you have the main character, uh, he's like the super genius, and uh, there's these death gods, demons, and they he drops like a notebook. The, de death, the demon drops a notebook to this guy, and his whole purpose in doing this, this notebook, if you write somebody's name in it, they die. And, um, and so you, he drops it, this demon drops the notebook down, and he's just seeking to have some fun. Like he just wants to mess things up and have people die and just make things interesting because he's getting bored in the demon realm. And so the main character um, gets this. He convinces himself basically that he's God, uh, that you know he he is ruler of life and death, and uh, becomes kind of a, a detective uh, cat and mouse show. Um, then in the middle of the way, there's a time skip, and actually by after the time skip, he has basically uh, he's worshipped. There's actually a cult. He's he's God now, and so uh, he's, this character will use. Uses people. Uh, he he. he and this is the this is the main character of the show. He uses people. Um, uh, he'll he'll just he'll he'll kill people when they're no longer useful to him. These are these are extremely extremely evil and dark things. And uh, and there were actually kids who this is also banned in Russia because there was a girl who committed suicide, uh, suicide. It had to, it was connected with this. But there were scares in schools, even in elementary school. Um, an elementary school kid watching this, where they would have. Um, no death notes, and they would write their enemies in there, and uh, you know that was that, that, would, that those things would make the news um, a while back. Uh, it's just like you know, like kids having a hit list or something. Well, I went to public school, so maybe maybe familiar to uh, to traditional Catholics. Well, I was homeschooled. But, uh, I was homeschooled, so I mean, I, I probably did have a hit list, but it was yeah. it was pretty short. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that, guys. As as everybody knows here at the Catholic Family Podcast, very common to have connection issues. <laughs> sorry about that. But we're back with Mr. Noah Ellis again talking about anime. So so where do we want to go from here? So so we've seen how how bloody these can be. We've seen how immodest they can be and how dark. I mean, that's pretty disturbing that, you know, giving kids the idea to make hit lists and kill lists. I mean, that, that, that's a clearly a disturbing theme. I mean, I, is, is there, is there more than this? I mean, to me, it's one of these things. It's kind of like when I, when I did the show about yoga, it's like after 
the first half hour or so is like, okay, why does anybody do this? You know, and it's, and so that's what's striking me now. It's like, I mean, if people hear this, I, I hope people are pretty convinced that it, we're not saying we're, we're not, we're not authorities here. We're not saying you have to stop watching. You, you said that several times, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, you better be careful what, especially what your kids are watching. Crazy. Yeah. Right. Cool. Some I might object like, oh, not everything's like Death Note. But Death Note is one of the most popular ones, and that's why that's why I'm mentioning. That's why it deserves a mention, right? It's one of the most popular shows, and maybe not everything is as dark as that, or as um, perhaps as as bad an um, uh, in influence on on children. But you know, as a, our adversaries, Russia and China, kind of had the moral high ground on us here, a little, <laughs> which which is not a good thing. Uh, that they do understand that that the violence in these shows can be um, can be a bad influence. I, I think though that something that uh, something that if you were to read articles on anime online, something that would not be covered um, is how it distorts Christianity. Um, that this is kind of the next thing. And this is where like, okay, with immodesty sometimes a little bit could be justified based on the situation. You know, if it's not an occasion of sin, it has to not be an occasion of sin. Um, violence, you can watch some violence and it's it not affect you. But when the faith is distorted, uh, when, when there are false ideas about the, uh, Catholicism and the church put forward in a show, you absolutely cannot watch that. You can have absolutely nothing to do with that as a Catholic. There's no justification. And uh, this is something that happens fairly frequently. And so that's why it's something I want to mention here. Um, uh, Cause again, Japan never was a Christian, never was Catholic, but the, it is um, the symbols of Christianity is interesting. They, they are interesting. They are interesting, not is, they are interesting to the Japanese and it, it's exotic to the Japanese. Just like anime could, is exotic to us, Christianity is exotic to them. And so they like to include symbolism um, and themes and even pull the church into uh, some, of their, some of their content. And uh, it's, never, it's never done correctly, ever, ever, because they don't understand. Um, and so, um, let me see here. Uh, so the church, uh, if the church is in the show, it will be depicted as a large, kind of despotic organization that uh, that doesn't really have a focus on uh, on preserving the faith and things like that. It's going to be a large the despotic organization that uh, that fights demons, generally speaking. Um, that's what they're going to depict the church as. And it's going to have like a secret exorcist core in the Vatican and, and the Vatican controls. And, but, you know, they'll p depict the church using bad means. For example, uh, in one show, they have, um, it's called the Blue Exorcist, and it follows the, uh, a main character who is the son of Satan and a human woman. And uh, he works for the church, basically, as an exorcist. Um, or you have um, to other, other shows like Helsing. I've never seen that, but I just, I know of it. Um, and that's like a, a vampire is a demon hunter for the Anglican church. I mean, so uh, they'll, have the, they'll have the church using means that obviously the church couldn't use. This is totally distorted anyway. I mean, Satan can't have a child with a human woman. That's, that's not, that's impossible. But, um, but again, these are things that the, the, the Japanese will include in some of their, uh, in some of their content. Uh, that's kind of how they would, how they see the church. Um, I, I remember one show even that God dies in that show. Like they, they killed God in that show. Like that's, it's just terrible. That's just terrible. And sometimes those things will be included. Um, they'll have um, the clergy and religious, they'll depict them in sexualized ways, uh, or you know, sometimes um, the main the they'll have a priest who's an antagonist, or a pervert, or you know, de de depicting depicting the clergy in bad ways. Um, in one show is uh, called Fate Zero. It's it's a whole series. Fate something is they're all called Fate something. Um, the so the main character one of the main characters is actually supposed to be descended from some of the hidden Christians, some of the ones who lived without the sacraments, but then now they're into magic and magic circles and summoning spirits from the past to make them fight each other. Um, one of the antagonists is actually, um, at least he dresses as a priest. I'm not sure if technically they have him as a priest in there or not, but he dresses as a priest and is affiliated with the church, but is just a, a terrible person um, who's a who's evil person. And, uh, and uses magic, obviously. Like I said, religious can be sexualized. They will sexualize nuns. They have no problem doing that. Absolutely no problem doing that. And they, and they do that very frequently. Um, and so um, and just, just, just noting those things, and, and those things are the more, um, the, the more obvious, the more obvious um, 
instances of, of distorting Christianity, but something that can be a little bit more insidious or a little bit more um, uh, uh, under, the, under the table is, is, is just um, appropriating Christian symbols without understanding what they mean and, um, and, 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 and twisting and using them in, in incorrect ways. I think the best example of this was a show that came out in the 90s called Neon Genesis Evangelion actually, in the Japanese actually translates to New Age Gospel. So, um, uh, you know, they the, the directors actually said like they uh, they are not Christians, but they thought the symbols were cool and, you know, like like us. So um, there are other 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 shows that will do similar things. Um, they'll they'll leave the church and priests and religious alone, but maybe they'll uh, give incorrect ideas of what demons are like. They'll like make them have like a good side uh, where you can sympathize with them or um, or they'll they'll personify the seven deadly sins. There's several shows that do this. And again, you like you learn to kind of sympathize with greed a little bit. Like that's kind of what they're. And so, you know, uh, that's um, and I could, you can list, you know, quite a few of them like Full Metal Alchemist, very popular Legend of Arslan, um, uh, Madoka Magica. Um, I have several listed here in the, the ReZero and the Fate series. Uh, these shows, you'll 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 see Christian symbolism, but uh, usually juxtaposed with magic and summoning demons. And uh, Full Metal Alchemist is uh, extremely uh, you know considered one of the one of the gems, one of the most well-made, mo most popular shows released ever. Um, it was actually remade. And they made it and then they remade it again like several years later because it was so it was so popular. And the first woman. Um, they botched a little bit, and so they had to re redo it. But uh, it starts with the main characters trying to summon their mother. Um, I think they even um, they they cut their they they have to bleed themselves a little bit. It's been a long time since I've watched it, but they're trying to summon their mother with a magic circle, and um, and the whole thing is the one boy loses his arm and the other loses his body and gets has to his spirit gets put into a suit of armor. Uh, these things. We can't watch them, you know. You, we can't watch those things with really the the dark magic and the and the and the twisting of Christian symbolism. Absolutely, totally off limits. And that is something that you will that you will find, especially in some of the more mature, darker content. Well, it's, it's interesting. We just just recorded a podcast with Intruibo talking about um, that that type of topic about Ouija boards and 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 summoning spirits and whatnot. And it's something that as, as we talked about in that show, it is just something you just, you don't mess with and, and you can't, right? Exactly. And, and, and again, I know I said this about 10 times in the show, but you, do we really want our, our teenagers or our children watching this stuff? I mean, what, what are they going to think? You know, they're watching their favorite shows and ha ha ha. Oh, look. Okay. And let's say, let's say there's a teenager who, who loves this show and then his mother dies. I mean, I mean, really seriously. I mean, what, what, what is he going to do? I mean, I mean, hopefully nothing, but I mean, maybe he's going to say, oh, well, you know, it's worth a shot. And boy, you try summoning spirits. And, and I think everyone can guess what's going to happen. I, I mean, it's a crazy thing. And it's like, well, again, you can't you can't play with this stuff. It, it is actual fire. I mean, it will it will burn you. And sometimes in, in the most horrific way possible, really. Absolutely. And I, mean, I, I would say even just by watching it, you're opening a door. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just yeah. by watching it, you're opening sure. a door. Sure. Um, into your own life, and so I, I would say, very dangerous. Stay away. Um, you know, with the three things we've talked about so far, it's like um, it's it's really hard to justify not keeping a prudential distance from the entire medium of anime because it, this stuff is uh, not everything's going to have summoning spirits in it. Not everything's going to have gratuitous violence. Not everything's going to have pedophilia. But um, but if you get into the whole thing, the, the whole anime, you know, fandom community you're you're going to run into these things this, these are things you will run into so um yeah no you're absolutely right with that and um and so we have to as catholics we have to keep a very um far distance from these things That's one of the last things we're going to talk about here is um addiction obsession with anime uh, the escapism aspect of it um distortion of reality this all kind of plays together so um you know on the on the addiction side of it you certainly you certainly see people who are, who are addicted to anime online? Uh, they're they're very very common, and uh, they they they'll usually have YouTube channels, and it's really sad to watch these adult men um, sitting and watching every episode of every anime that comes out every season because it's it's seasonal, just like shows on television. I'm assuming this is how they are: the spring and summer, fall, winter, and so uh, the, these men will actually sit and you know like 20 shows will come out each season, and they'll watch every episode and review them 
like every day they'll have a new video. That's really sad. That's immensely sad. Or, um, and, and, but you know, as with, it's just, as with any addiction, what you've done is you've rewired your brain. Um, and now you get the dopamine whenever you, um, whenever you watch it and there are things in it that will addict you. The, the, the violence and then, and, and the sexuality will certainly, it can certainly addict you very quickly. So, um, that's, that's certainly something to be concerned about. Something that anime does very well because it is animated because the, um, um, the, the audio can be created alongside with the, with the, with the visuals, um, is the world building aspect of it. And, you know, most anime will, um, will have a fandom very similar to kind of have the Lord of the Rings people or the Star Wars people where, um, they'll have all kinds of different theories about the universe and the, generally there's good internal cohesion. If it doesn't have the good internal cohesion in the story, it's not going to be successful. So, um, they usually have this and so it has a really good, um, it has a propensity towards world building and that, uh, that leads to escapism. You, you, I lost you when you said this is a form of escapism. Right. Yeah. Anime is, is certainly, uh, is certainly a form of, uh, of escapism. Um, you know, we have, people have all kinds of things they want to escape from, um, and you can escape into these different worlds. And, um, and, and, and so it, there, there's certainly that, there's certainly that appeal there. Um, also, um, as an, as a, as an aside note, Russia has also banned some shows that, um, they're called isekai shows. Basically that means that it's where the main character, um, go, gets transported into another world and has to live a different life. And so that they are also escapists in that sense. And uh, Russia has banned some of those shows because it, um, they want to, they don't want kids thinking that, uh, that this life is bad and you want to go to a different life. Uh, they don't want kids thinking that, you know, I wish I was in a different life where I could be just totally immoral and like have all kinds of different vices like these characters have. And, um, and so Russia has banned a couple of those as well. Um, escapism is, is, a it, you know, it, in, in measure is a good thing, right? Um, it depends what you're escaping into, and um, to anime has a uh, has a propensity towards um, emotional engagement. I think unlike any other medium, and, and this is just in my in my in my humble opinion, um, it, it it seems it seems it seems that people get very very invested, very very emotionally uh, attached to it. Um, the, the 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 people who are anime fans are virulent, virulently like very violently fans of anime. In fact, some people may watch this interview and, and be quite angry in the comment section because of what For I'm sure. saying. And, Absolutely. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling, I'm trying to give you just outside perspective. Like this is, this is a semi outside perspective because I've seen a lot of it myself, but, um, but the outside perspective, this is Catholic faith trying to trying to look at this and see these, these problems. So escapism, certainly a problem. Um, the emotional engagement, I think comes from uh, several different uh, sources. And um, uh, one of them is that Eastern literature has an entirely different narrative structure than Western. Um, I think this deserves a mention in just trying to understand some of the psychology of people who get really involved in it. Why are they doing this? Um, totally different narrative structure, which is exotic, which is different, which emphasizes, um, um, does not emphasize conflict because Western, Western, uh, Western narratives, you have a, a conflict, and then the premise comes from that. So you have the Galactic Empire is going to take over the universe, and we have to stop them. You have uh, Sauron's going to take over Middle Earth, and we have to stop him. You have the conflict, and then you have the uh, the, the narrative, which kind of comes from that. It's conflict based. You won't have a story without a conflict. In Eastern literature, that's not the case. There may be stories with no conflict because of the way that uh, the way that they are organized. It's, there's different names for it in each country, China and Korea and Japan. But in Japan, it's called, it's, it's technically, it's four words, Kisho Tenkatsu. And it's focused on um, a twist. It's, it, there's, there's a twist in the story. You're, you're made to become attached to the characters over the first uh, kind of two parts of the story. It leads up to a twist. There's a twist. And then resolving that. Um, but there's not necessarily a conflict could be introduced at that point. But there's not necessarily any conflict. That's why they're able to make uh, the J Japanese are able to make what is called slice of life anime, where you have um, uh, it, it, it is escapism. <laughs> you you get to be like a high school character, and you just it's literally about them interacting with the people around them. Yeah. That's it. They're popular. 
extremely, extremely popular, and maybe about farming or something. But um, but these are extremely, extremely popular. They're possible because of this narrative structure, and um, and it's emotionally engaging, and it, it lends itself towards escapism. So um, I, I, I'll give an example uh, of kind of how one of these stories would go, and uh, that way maybe we're able to visualize it a little better, maybe understand a little bit, uh, you know, why that why this works. This is from. A, uh, a movie that came out several years ago called Your Name. This was one of those movies that was released in the theaters. It was extremely popular. I don't recommend it, but I, you know, I, I've seen an end of the story, so I'll just kind of give that real quick, and we'll see how there, there's not necessarily a conflict and how they're able to um, to draw you in and then hit you in the gut with the emotions, and this keeps people watching. Um, so Key introduced the premise. So you have a girl in the country and a boy in the city, and they magically start switching places every few days show you build tension um they try not to ruin each other's lives and they try to work together to get through what's happening eventually the switching stops and the void goes to try find the girl 10 the twist um in the middle of the story the girl has actually been dead three years uh their the town was destroyed by a comet they've been switching across time and so the boy has to try to hatch a plan to reinitiate the body switching again to try to save her and then uh, Ketsu, together they save the town, etc. So, um, you know, the, the conflict, uh, there's, the, there's the comet, and there's, there's this and that. But you don't really have, um, you know, like in Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, you don't have an evil force that you're fighting, really. It's just, they're living their lives. They kind of have, there's this premise of this body swapping, and the premise comes before the conflict. The premise kind of leads to it. If it was written in Western style, from the beginning, you would know about the comet, that it was going to kill them all, and that this body swapping is a way that we're going to stop uh, the comet from killing everybody. So uh, you can see um, there's going to be your focus on character, character development, um, trying to build that emotional connection to those characters so that you're able, so that the twist matters to you because the twist has to matter. Um, and so you know, an anime is really successful only when it draws you in emotionally. That's, that is their, that is their, that is their, they're focused on that. And so it leads, it lends itself very well, very easily to, uh, to to that to that escapism, and ultimately to uh, to being uh, you know addicted in some way, and addictive in some way to it. Um, well, so. that, that's an interesting thing that we. It's another thing we don't really think about, even when it comes to music, mm -hmm. of how we should what what we should listen to that affects our emotions, right? I mean, it used to be, of course, you know, 500 years ago, 800 years ago, music was made only to help us lift our minds to mm -hmm. God, and that's of course the highest form of music. And then, okay, eventually, you know, you had, say, Mozart. And even at his time, you started to see that the, that the, it started to pull a little more on the emotional heartstrings and maybe a little bit past Mozart, but around that time, and you start to get a sadder form of music and, and, and whatever. And so it really started to get an emotional impact, which is actually a bad thing that is, that is not, that is frowned upon even by the church. And that's something, again, to remember watching particularly sad movies or, or horror for sure. That is, that is not something that is recommended. It's just not, it, it is not something that we, we do not want to, I don't want to say ne negative is not the right word, but we don't want to impact our emotions in a way that is not, I don't know how to, how to explain it, but it is not furthering us towards God. I suppose. It doesn't lift us up to God. And right. you know, ultimately my, my conclusion here is going to be, if it doesn't lift you up to God, why are why are we wasting our time? Today is the feast of Saint Alphonsus Liguori. He didn't waste a moment of he made a vow not to waste time, and uh, and you know we should keep that in mind. You know even when we're recreating, you know we're we're um, with, with this escapism. Maybe you have an anime that you don't have. There's nothing bad in it. Nothing bad in it. Okay, but um, but you know if you're watching an episode every day, you're you're wasting you're wasting that time. You're getting involved in a world that doesn't exist, and. Um, so it's not necessarily, a, especially if it's not lifting your mind up to God. At least, like with Lord of the Rings or something, you know, there's those there's those Catholic um, themes and things like that you can discuss. And there's these philosophical ideas that you can discuss with the anime. It's again, the, the, if it waxes philosophical, it's existentialist. It's focused on experience. That's what existentialism is focused on: experience. Modernism actually is is this is same idea. It's uh, focused on we're focusing on experience we're focusing on um encounter and um an interaction and connection with each other um and 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 that, that's that's not that's not a good that's not a good thing i actually um censored this movie your name and i had um one of my my brother seminarian anthony alley watch it 
um, I, I cut out the bad parts. And I was curious, uh, is he was somebody who had never seen anime, um, how he would, re how, how, how somebody would react to it. And exactly what, what he's, what he, what he came out saying was, okay, you know, this was, uh, it was emotionally manipulative, basically, you know, that it was emotionally manipulative, well-made, you know, pretty, um, good get sound direction, you know, overall well made, but like, but he came out emotionally manipulated. It just served to stir up emotion. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's, that was kind of his takeaway from it. It's interesting. And I think that anime in general does that. It just stirs up. It, it makes you relate to it because everybody has lost someone or fell in love with someone. And so when these characters do that, um, you can relate to them. You can kind of live vicariously through them. It's tapping into that emotion. And that's why I think this, film your name was so popular because people were going and watching it like a dozen times in the theater crazy <laughs> crazy stuff because it, like you've seen it once you already know what happens but right. um but they were but the, the whole idea at the beginning they lose their memories of each other and so uh, the movie begins and ends with these characters longing for something like long i don't know what i'm longing for because the beginning and the end are in the same they're both like time skip ahead from what happens in the most of the film and so they're they're longing for something and so it's really what the film is doing is just tapping into we all have a sense of longing uh, it's for god ultimately but uh, but you know they don't understand that in japan and so it's longing for another person longing for um a significant other and so the whole the whole film is just kind of playing on that emotion that's what's what it's doing ultimately and i you know i think that's what that's often what anime does and that's what that's worth mentioning that's not that's not necess that's not a good thing right that's that's uh yeah, maybe it made you cry. People are coming out. I've I've watched. I've I've analyzed this film quite a bit, and and um, you know, people say, "Oh, it's uh, it changed my life." How did it change your life? There's nothing in there that should change your life. Uh, it's just uh, tapping into your tapping into your emotional baggage, <laughs> and uh, that's not a good thing. So again, that's kind of escapism. Not a good thing. Something that uh, not for not for Catholics. Not for um, you know. Not for um at, at least when we're when we're talking about just tapping into our emotions and and um and, and giving that um that that escape like that we should want to escape into um you know towards towards god not not something that could potentially take us away from him yeah no yeah i i i agree i i, I think it's, it is again it's just something take it seriously i mean it, I, as i'm sure we're going to wrap this up i think that 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 would be that would be my words is that you you everything that you especially with your children don't trust anything don't trust anything so i mean if if you really think okay i really want my kids to watch an, anime okay fine but then you have to watch every single episode first you have to you have to it is actually your job as a parent you you can't you can't half do your job our job as a parent is to protect their souls and that starts from literally day one and in everything you do your children see and everything they watch goes towards what where their soul is going to end up and that is our responsibility as parents we cannot take that for granted we have to watch anything they watch we have to watch it first that that's that's the basic very basic ground floor and that's just saying even if you have to have them watch anime you got to watch it first yeah. and that's just, that's a must it just has to be yes it absolutely is so that that is that is um that that is that is kind of the the verdict there one last one last point here with piracy, uh, something that traditional Catholics don't understand. Lay out this moral principle for you. With anime, piracy very common. You just go online and watch for free anything you want on these third pirate third party pirate websites or from torrents. Download torrents. I did plenty of that. I didn't understand it was necessarily wrong at the time, but if you do, when you do understand it's wrong, you'd be bound to, to restitution for that because you're 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 taking you're taking something that these people rightfully uh, have uh, have a title. To uh, to receiving support from this content, actually, being an animator in Japan is a terrible job, and they drop dead all the time from overwork. <laughs> they don't get it paid enough. They work too hard, and and they die. And so, whenever you're 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 using, you, use if you're going to watch it, you watch it legally on on streaming websites. If it's not offered, that's too bad. Um, but you you can't you can't pirate things. That's uh, some people will say copyrights don't exist. Um, they'll like quote some obscure moral theologian. And the, the issue is if you check your, your major moral theolo theology manuals, I'm talking like McHugh and Callan uh, or, um, or Davis or um, uh, 
Joan Adelman, uh, or Yona Adelman, if you uh, want to pronounce it correctly, um, you you'll understand copyright copyright does exist at least at least within um, we are we are bound to to observe it at least for like the first edition or something as long as they as long as it's needed for uh, the support of that um, of that individual. They do have a right to their work, and even if we're not sinning against justice and we're not bound to restitution, that's giving back what what we've basically taken. Um, if we're not bound to restitution, at least in charity, we're we're bound to give them support. So piracy is something very uh, common among anime watchers. Um, it's not right. It's it's not right, and it's not right also for books. Even you know if you down if you download, there's some websites where people go and they scan new books, new theology books or whatever. And and they'll put them online for a PDF. You you're that's you're not entitled to that. That's you 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 have to pay you have to pay them if it's still under copyright. That's okay. I mean you know maybe uh, maybe some would disagree with me on that, but um, but but in general, I mean if you read the moral theologians, this is more or less what it's saying. And uh, ask, just ask yourself, just ask yourself, why am I doing this? You know, am I doing this to avoid paying? Am I doing this to avoid paying when when I when I know I should be? Just because right. I, I don't want to. If the, if the answer is yes, you, you should not do it. So just as a last note, this is not, I mean, this is kind of tangential, but piracy big problem with anime watchers and, and, and in general. We should respect copyrights um, and, and we should we should give support to people where where uh, where it's due. Because you think of all the money, you know, like so many people watch these anime illegally online and how much money is being taken away from these people who spend a lot of time, a lot of effort. A lot of effort, and because these are hand drawn, like um, you know, this isn't computer generated. Generally, this is hand drawn every frame. That's why some of it looks derpy sometimes, like stupid, but um, or, or like they cut corners. But in general, I mean, they, they're 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 drawing the every every single frame, and uh, and, and and so we, we we should, if you're going to watch it, give them support rightfully. Don't don't steal. No, good point. But it, it sounds like another another good topic for another day. I think you could you could go deep into that one because I think it's a, it's a great point, and I think it's one that uh, easy to fall into, re really easy because because as you say, it's it's so easily available. I mean, if you just Google a movie or something and it comes up, it's like, oh, hey, that that works out. You know, that, that's nice. Yeah, you know, yeah, don't, don't yeah, don't don't steal. It. I've I've heard the same for music artists. They they all have to stay on tour even until they're like eighty years old because all of their recorded music is is has been stolen pretty much. And they, there's almost nothing they can do about it at this point. And that's a, that, that, that is a bad thing. And it's not like I, I appreciate most of these industries or anime or whatever, but it is, you, you still have to pay fairly to, um, to the creators. I think that's a good point. Good topic. We're going to have to have you on again to, to talk about that. And that, that, that's a, that's a really interesting one that I think you could, you could go down, you know, even further, okay. but, um, but no, I, I think for, for me, it's been really fascinating and, and, and Honestly, a little disturbing, and and I think that you know I, I'm sure we're gonna have comments. That, yeah, well, look at Hollywood. Yeah, okay, yeah. look at Hollywood. I, I mean, it's not like we're saying you know anime is the only evil that's being produced or the only you know possible potential danger. It's not, I'm not saying it's evil necessarily, but I mean, the, it, it, of course, it is Hollywood too. I mean, I look at how often I to bring up Disney. The, the point is, as as Mr. Ellis says, it, it is something that is coming it's becoming more and more popular and so we have to be more and more aware that we have to be careful with it and to know just what it is and it, you know you know the, the the stupid saying that says knowledge is power well at least sometimes it, it is i mean to to know don't be ignorant especially as parents don't don't be ignorant. really look into these things and, and um and, and don't be emotionally attached even though it sounds like that that might that might be a problem with with this crowd but yeah. but but you know hey if you want to save your soul you know, don't be emotionally attached to, to anything but God, right? I mean, God says that. Leave your father and your mother, right? I mean, and that's don't be it. Don't be attached to anything but God. That's right. Simple as that, Mister Noel Ellis. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on. And again, hopefully, sometime you know, maybe with a slightly better internet connection, <laughs> we'll we'll have you on again to talk. Maybe we'll talk about philosophy or copyright laws. I sure. I would really appreciate it. It's it's been it's been really fascinating. It's been fun. We hope that everyone else has has learned something. If if not enjoyed it necessarily it's not not necessarily an enjoyable show but we hope you've learned something and please if you did share it with someone who you know who who watches a lot of anime especially someone who might be addicted to it you know someone who might have a problem with it young children who are watching it this is really important stuff we have the responsibility not just as parents but also for the future generations to help the younger children the, the next generations to to know what is right and what is wrong 
Now, we also have to be careful with that, but that's exactly why we have someone who's actually looked into it and can tell us what, you know, what it actually brings. So, so please like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. Mr. Noah Ellis, until next time, God bless you. Thank you.